Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is May 10th and right now it's about 6.30 p.m. So I thought I'd go ahead and do a special update here because of the Aurora forecast. If you have a Twitter account or an X account or you're surfing social media, you've probably heard all about it here. A lot of uh, great sites here with the Northern Lights being directly overhead of portions of Europe right now. It's now starting to occur across the East Coast of North America. The Northern Lights are being spotted across the Bahamas as well. So if I put this in a motion, you can see what's going on as we go through tonight in the forecast here. You can see this can be spreading towards Pacific Northwest as well. And we're gonna go over some of those details here in a moment. But if we look here, G5 conditions, check it out. This is the first time since October 2003 that there's been a G5 event here and that resulted in some power outages in Sweden and damaged some transformers in South America. More on that here in a moment. I also could see this today with my telescope here. And I've got a solar shield on it here, and it was very dramatic. It was pretty interesting looking. I've seen times when the sun has had no sunspot activity at all, at least the portion facing Earth in my view. And today was looked just like this here, but it was even more glorious because you could see it up close, and you could see all the yellow and the sunspots going on out there. And so that's what launched, apparently that's what launched this um, magnetic storm at the planet Earth. I'm not an expert in this here. But I thought I'd go over some things here as well. We're going to look at cloud cover here across Pacific Northwest also. But again, a G5, it's extreme and it's the first time in 21 years. It can cause some navigation systems maybe out for hours or days. And the aurora may be seen as low as Florida and southern Texas. And there is a chance for northern or even southern California on the horizon seeing some of these northern lights. And here's National Weather Service Portland, Oregon, I believe. And again, extreme geomagnetic storm. You can see it could cause multiple widespread issues with power outages and communication system outages. High frequency radio propagation may be impossible. Possible GPS, all kinds of crazy stuff can happen when these extreme solar storms are observed. And again, kind of going over the details there. But this is something very interesting here. So you can see the special weather statement. This is actually for this geomagnetic storm here for Seattle. And Portland also has taken part in this too. And again, they're talking about all the problems that occur. So go into the NOAA site if you want to read more about that. And this is Seattle's. And you can see really the Pacific Northwest is the only one kind of highlighting that even though the Northern Lights and the damage and possibilities for some disruptions here do exist across much of the United States and portions of Canada, of course, as well. So if you want to know what the Aurora is, you know, there's a spaceweather.gov and you can check out and read all about what the Aurora exactly is because you may not have to get away from the city lights here tonight to be able to see this pretty close to being overhead potentially for some portions of the Pacific Northwest. And again, that G5, a very rare event and uh, he's ramping things up here as we go through the evening hours. So hopefully this comes through and some people get to view it in our area. Now taking a look at the total cloud cover, this is the European, <clears throat> excuse me. If I put this into motion, You'll see some of these high clouds kind of moving across the area today. But as we go through tonight and on in towards midnight here, look at this. We're barely dealing with any clouds here. So there should be pretty good viewing. Of course, when northern light events do occur, we tend to be cloudy a lot of times because we're just cloudy a lot of times across Pacific Northwest. <clears throat> so this is going to be quite a nice treat for all you Aurora viewing lovers out there. Take a look at the national, actually this is a North American model here, three kilometer high resolution. We're going to scroll through this as we go towards midnight tonight, right about there. There's 11 o'clock. That's when astronomical twilight will set in and it'll be completely dark. And you can see not much in the way of clouds. Maybe some of the coastal areas getting some clouds, the Rocky Mountains, but a lot of Vancouver, BC and Washington, Oregon, Portland, eastern portions, Idaho are going to have some pretty good viewing as well as portions of California. It may even be viewable all the way down south. And if we take a look here you can see i'm going to look out here towards nighttime it starts at 10 53 p.m so astronomical twilight ends at 10 53 p.m all the effects of the sun's rays will be gone across our skies this is for seattle washington and if you want to go here too you can go to timeanddate.com and check that out and do your individual location here i may go out there and try to capture some of this and try to capture a cool backdrop with it as well maybe the 
something there downtown Seattle, who knows. But again, you can see Astronomical Twilight starts at 1053. So that's probably, you could probably even start looking a little bit earlier than that if this is really going to be as dramatic as what it looks like. And also the moon is not, you know, it's a waxing crescent. Not going to be too bright out there. So that may help with some of the viewing. And of course, it's always going to be better if you can get up in the Cascades or some areas, you know, maybe north in British Columbia Cascades as well. Anyway, away from the city lights, you're going to get better viewing of the of the aurora that may be overhead here across Pacific Northwest. So yeah, interesting stuff there. Again, I'm not an expert on this or anything like that. I have much more experience forecasting the weather here, but kind of an interesting uh, scenario unfolding here. Well, again, um, some portions in the East Coast are already picking it up uh, down towards Georgia and the, the Bahamas even. So you're probably, people are probably starting to pick it up across areas of Florida. So as long as this persists a little bit longer here as we get towards our nighttime hours, we're likely to see it here across Pacific Northwest. So anyway, hope you guys get out there and get a chance to see that. We're going to do my normal forecast for the California Weather Watch uh, channel and the Pacific Northwest Weather Watch channel. We'll do those briefings again tomorrow as per usual. But just want to throw this one out here for you as well. So anyway, if you guys get anything, we'll look me up on Twitter, Seattle Weather Guy, or is known as X now, and send me some images out there as well. Um, but yeah, pretty hot day today. I think it got to at least 82 at my house. I haven't looked at the official high. We'll dive into those details tomorrow. And one more very warm day tomorrow before slight cool down as we go on into Sunday and early next week. And we'll take a look at the extended forecast as we go through uh, tomorrow morning's forecast. So yeah, I hope you guys get out there and a chance uh, to enjoy the northern lights today. And uh, we'll do this. We'll do the normal briefings tomorrow. And I will talk to you guys then.